Welcome back to Seahawks Central Sports. Lucas and I are here to discuss some of the hot topics going on in the sports world right now. Ready, Lucas? Let's do it. Let's start off with some UNCW topics. As we discussed earlier, the women's basketball team has made an exciting new hire in Cynthia Cooper Dyke. Lucas, what kind of impact do you think that will have on the women's basketball team this year? In all honesty, an immediate impact. Uh, you know, she has a fantastic resume. Um, someone like her walking into living rooms is going to be able to get recruits. You know, she knows how to play basketball. She's been on winning teams before. Um, you know, she's got a great resume, and you know, who wouldn't want to come play for her? If for a guy's equivalent, it's honestly like Shaquille O'Neal coming into a to a living room saying, hey, come come play for me. You know, I'll, I'll teach you how to play. Absolutely agree. Two NCAA championships as a player, two tournament appearances as a coach, um, 88 gold medal in, in uh, Seoul, South Korea, eight-time scoring champion in Italian league. This woman knows how to win, and she's going to bring that winning atmosphere to UNCW. The only problem that I see, perhaps, is the fact that her former school, Prairie View A&M University, which is in the SWAC conference, uh, they were penalized in 2008 for NCAA rules violations, given four years probation. Uh, she was accused of giving players petty cash, tickets to Houston Comets, her former uh, team, tickets to former Hu yeah. to Houston Comets. Yeah, that's a problem, you know. And and honestly, I have also heard that she bought iPads for for her whole staff out of her pocket. So this money out of her pocket thing seems to be an issue. Let's hope she can keep that money in the pocket. We'll see. The women aren't the only team to make a new hire this past year. The Seahawks welcome in former Tar Heel champion Buzz Peterson to coach the squad this year. What kind of impact, impact do you think that will have on our team this year, Ben? I think it will be a positive impact. This guy is a proven winner as well, like you said, national champion as a player. MJ is Michael Jordan's roommate in college there from 81 to 85. Um, his head coaching career, uh, Appalachian State, he started out there in 96. He was there for four years, made an NCAA tournament appearance in 2000. Moved on to Tulsa and won the NIT in his only appearance there. That's very impressive. Went to Tennessee, struggled a bit, so he had to come back down to the mid-majors. Uh, overall, 10 games over 500 in, with Coastal Carolina. And he went 24 and 13 last year with Appalachian State. You got to like it. You know, uh, as a team that was 9 and 22, uh, I feel like the only place we can go is up. Uh, yeah, the, um, the only possible problem I can see is it's I call it Skip Holtz factor being from Greenville. It's too much success and he's and he bounces. Um, you know, he's already been to a bunch of schools, Appalachian State. He was there for one year. He was at Tulsa for one year. You know, I, I'm really hoping. But 9 and 22, you can't go anywhere but up, you know? Well, it's a rebuilding year. We only have two players over six. So five. are you telling me right now less than nine losses? I'm putting you on the spot. Less than nine wins. I'm saying possibly four or five, yeah. Possibly four or five possibly wins. Possibly four to five wins. When you're, playing, when you're playing teams that have four or five players that are six, ten, six, nine, they're, that's that's big difference no matter how good the coaching is. Yeah. All right, moving on to the topic of Seahawks basketball, off of the topic of Seahawks basketball, but staying with Seahawks sports, let's talk about the men's soccer team. They were conference champions last year and made it to the national tournament with all the hype around them this year, do you see them taking a step forward or a step back? You know, I gotta say step forward, man. I, I'll be very honest with you, Ben. This is the team I am most excited about this year. I am, I am just, just thrilled. They got returning seniors. They got four guys, all CAA. They got Brock Duckworth, literally one of the top five goalkeepers in the nation. Listen to this statistic. Are you ready? His, his net save average. 886, .886. that means almost 89% of shots on target he blocked. That number is sick. Second in the wow. nation. You know, and when you have a keeper like that, you got guys coming back. You know, our team was so good last year, made it to the tournament, had a tough early round loss to the weight, but made it to the tournament. So if we're that good, and then we bring back Devin Carroll this year, two years ago, reigning CAA champion, I mean, player of the year. Once again, we are in agreement. 14-3-5 uh, and five last year. That is an amazing soccer record yeah. um, for, uh, like you said, preseason all CAA players. I believe this is our year to go deep in the tournament. I predict revenge against Wake Forest in the I'd tournament like and a possible I'd soccer like Sweet 16 appearance. And uh, let me just point out that we have three seniors that were named all CAA, plus Carroll the senior, nine goals and two assists last year in his N08. Nothing but greatness. Got to got, got, got like where we're going. Well, most countries refer to soccer as football, but here in America we have a different sport we call football. And the collegiate season starts in less than a week. Ben, what are, this, what are some of the teams and conferences you see finding a lot of success this year? First of all, I got to go with Alabama. Um, I, I got to say the preseason polls, they don't mean anything to me. I agree. Uh, I we got to wait until you know the first games are played. That said, Alabama is the defending champion. There has not been a, def a repeat champ since Nebraska did it in 95. 
However, returning quarterback Greg McElroy, uh, Heisman winner Mark Ingram, yep. uh, top receiver yep. Julio Jones. Yeah, I got to agree with you. You know, Alabama is just a quality team. They really got it going on. Um, you know what I think a lot a conference that a lot of people have been overlooking that I really think is making big strides this year. I, I like the Big Ten. You know, I'm a Michigan fan, so you know I always stay partial to the Big Ten. But you got Ohio State. You know, who's probably going to win that conference and could play for national championships. They're fantastic. You got Iowa. You got Penn State. Wisconsin's Wisconsin. got a good, good, good program going. That, that's an excellent point. And um, I, I just got to say about that, Iowa is the team to beat no. in no, the Big Ten. No, Iowa's not a team to beat. Well, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. They they have an easier schedule to go undefeated than OSU. OSU plays Miami early. Um, their road opponents are 31 and 32. Last year is their record. They play Ohio State at home. They play Penn State at home. They play Wisconsin at home. Ricky Stanzi, the returning quarterback. He's great. Adrian Claiborne was voted yeah, the best yeah, yeah. player in the Big Ten those by his good peers. Stats. Those are good stats, but I got one stat for you. And a half I got one name year. for you. Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor. One player. All right, moving on. Staying with football, but moving on to the NFL. The season is quickly approaching, with, which means one thing, fantasy drafts. Lucas, who are some of your top picks as this year's fantasy stars? All right, well, I, I got I to gotta go with my producer on this. Danny Knoll led me in this direction. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. I'm saying the guy from Cal spent a couple years riding the bench. You know, watch Brett Favre. He has really, really come into his own in the past few years. 64.7 uh, completion percentage last year, 30 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 6 rushing touchdowns, 103.2 passer rating. All right, at quarterback, I'll give it to you. Rodgers is great. He learned from the best in Favre. I got to go with Drew Brees, though. 4,388 yards, 34 touchdowns yep. last year, and he has been dynamite ever since his arm surgery. Uh, the year he was cut by the Chargers, won the Super Bowl last year. The kid is riding high. Reigning champion. He's the guy to beat. He's the guy to beat. All right, running, yep. running backs. Who do you got on running back? Running back, Chris Johnson. How can you not have Chris Johnson? Exactly. 2,509 yards from scrimmage, 2,006 yards rushing. The first back to go over 2,000 yards since Jamal Lewis, I believe, in 2001. Yeah. 16 total touchdowns. Yep. He said he wants to rush for 2,500 yeah, yards. I don't know about all that. 2,500 yards is league. crazy. All right, but let, listen to this. Yeah. I got a guy. This is a good guy. You'll probably get him in the late rounds of your draft, but if he's sticking around in the fourth, fifth round, I'd pick him up. Felix Jones. Felix Jones, he's coming from behind Marion Barber, but I'm telling you, he put on 28 pounds this year, pure muscle. Watch that guy to do some work down in Dallas. Quickly, who do you have for wide receiver? Uh, Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings. I'll take Andre Johnson. All right. Now, one star you won't have on your fantasy team this year is 49ers running back Glenn Coffey, who retired to become apparently a minister. Ben, Glenn Coffey is not the first running back to retire young. What do you make of his decision? Well, I just want to clear that up. He uh, did not retire to become a minister. His exact quote was that uh, he did not that he said that his heart was never in football and God had a separate plan for him. Uh, I think he's returning to Alabama to pursue a degree in consumer affairs. Um, All right, but here's what I want to say to you. The guy left Alabama after his junior year. Why? To go pro. To go pro. And then one year later, after one year in the pros, he leaves. Explain the decision to me. I don't get it. Well, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. There could have been a monetary situation. You know, it could have, it could have been a poor. Uh, I'll family. tell you one thing. I think he may realize. I think he may realize playing running back in the NFL is is quite quite harder than people think. Absolutely agree. Uh, he probably saw the toll that football takes on running backs. You know, Bo Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned yep. Herschel Walker. Yep. Uh, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders early, retired early. But not it's, after their first year. Yeah, not after their first year. I don't know. You know, it's kind of crazy. He did only have 2.7 uh, uh, rushes yards per rush last year. Only one touchdown. Definitely not a stellar year, but, you know, it takes a while to progress in the NFL. I just think... To say your heart's never in the game, he played at Alabama. How can your heart not be in the game? I don't know. Two, two things on that. I, I had him on my fantasy team last year, and he did disappoint. And also, in the business of football, he was nothing but a commodity. Yep. And he may have realized that he Maybe. was as recyclable as a water bottle. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Now, the NFL season hasn't quite started yet, which means one thing, preseason football. Do you find these games meaningless, Lucas? And do you think any changes should be made to the NFL preseason schedule? All right, listen. I have been hearing for years and years and years, two games, all we need is two games, all we need is two games. No. That is from fans who are anxious to see their teams on the field. Do you understand the cuts and the, the moves that these coaches have to make? They have to go from 100 plus people down to a 50, 56 man roster, I believe. That is, that's hard work. You need four games to do that. To get your schemes down, to get your players down, you, you got to have four games. I appreciate you sticking up for the little man, but let me just set you straight. Let me be the voice of reason and tell you why an 18-game regular season is beneficial to everyone who loves football and is a part of it. First of all, to the fans. More action, the hard-earned money that the players get, their hard-earned money, 
buys more tickets that matter for games that matter. Uh, the commercial interest of the NFL, more money in everyone's pocket there. And also to the players, less risk of injury and meaningless games. That's the most wait important minute, factor wait to minute, me. Wait, 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 w